Thousands of RPG fans can't be wrong. 13th Age is the creation of veteran game designers Rob Heinzo and Jonathan Tweet. The game will feel both familiar and fresh if you're a fan of the genre. It encourages vibrant shared storytelling with the D20 system you're already familiar with. Like Dungeons & Dragons, 13th Age comes with familiar skills, abilities and a leveling system. Breathe life into your character. Navigate exciting and dangerous scenarios. Let the role of a d20 decide the fate of your character. You can do all that and more in the 13th Age. Your character is armed with unique abilities, spells, a range of powers and a wealth of gear and magical items. And let's not forget the sprawling epic setting, the Dragon Empire, a realm ripe with opportunities for grand adventures, whether on the land, in the high skies of the overworld, or the winding labyrinth of the underworld. In this video, I'll walk you through the similarities and show you the fresh takes 13th Age has on the genre, changes that will delight both players and GMs. Here's where they're similar. Both use a d20 system, and you have heritages and classes you'll be familiar with. Elven, human, dwarf, fighter, barbarian, sorcerer, wizard. You also find the six ability scores in both games. Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, Charisma. You have hit points and armor class, and you roll a d20 to resolve a challenge. There are skill challenges, there are saving throws, there's dungeon crawling and exploration, roleplay, and of course, combat. But here's the fresh take you get in 13th Age. Classes have talents, feats, and powers that can be mixed into a variety of options that will just feel and look cool both to you, the GM, and the players at your table. You'll use the middle score of three abilities for defenses, so there are no real dump stats, and there are effects on hits, misses, even and odd rolls. This makes rolling a lot more interesting for your players because something is always likely to happen. Now characters get armor class, but they also get physical defense and mental defense because everything comes down to an attack roll in 13th Age. And the DC is actually static, but it increases per tier of play, of which there are three. DCs will start at 15 for easy checks, 20 for normal checks, and 25 for hard checks that are nearly impossible in the adventure tier. And this scales up as you go up to the champion tier and the epic tier. Saves are made very straightforward. It's always a D20 roll. If you roll a six plus, on an easy save you succeed, if you roll an 11 plus on a normal save you succeed, and if you roll 16 plus on a hard save you succeed. This is an exciting new world. The Dragon Empire is without gods and it's ruled by icons who influence the narrative and your character arc tremendously. There are great mechanics in this game to enhance storytelling around the table. Backgrounds, uniques, montage system, and the monsters are so easy to run, it really becomes a lot of fun for the GM. Now, 13th Age uses abstract combat mechanics. You have relatively straightforward distances, like nearby, far away, or you're engaged or disengaged. And of course, it has the escalation die, which means that with every round of combat, your players become more proficient and ferocious, which leads to some interesting character strategies and tactics along the way. 13th Age carves out its own unique identity with these cool mechanics. Let's take a closer look. Wait, if you're enjoying the videos I'm making about 13th Age and Might and Mercy, please smash that subscribe button, hit a like, and let me know that I need to make more videos for you. Let's talk about characters, because when you have a game that enables storytelling, fun and cool characters are the core of the experience at the table. Now, what 13th Age does is it lets your character create a one unique thing. This means you are the only character in the entire game world that possesses that one trait. In my regular game, Might and Mercy, one of the characters is the lost of her kind. And that has implications not only for her character and how she behaves in the world, but also how the world and specific icons might respond to her presence in any situation or scenario. Now, a unique thing is not supposed to give you a mechanical advantage in any way. It is just there to help flavor your character, flavor the world, and set up a narrative or a story hook that is enjoyable for both the GM, the player, and the other players at the table. 
The second mechanic that the game has are the backgrounds. Some games have lists of skills that are predefined and predetermined, but what 13th Age does is says, no, let's give us backgrounds that we invent and create that shape the backstory of our character. And when the backgrounds come into play, they give you pluses to or bonuses to the roles that you might make on a skills check or any other kind of check that you're making. The fun of this is that when the situation arises, you as the player have the opportunity to engage with both the GM and other players at the table to explain why your background is relevant for this situation and you're both world building and storytelling at the same time. Now, all of these little character mechanics combined work together and enable the GM and the players to actually build the world together, create the story together, and have a lot of fun improvising and making up the game as they go along. Icons and the relationships characters can have with these icons are what set 13th Age apart from other games. Where other games might have deities, 13th Age has icons, the movers and shakers of this world. Now you as a character can have both a narrative and a mechanical relationship with any of these icons. Narratively, you can ally yourself with an icon or you can pitch yourself against an icon, whatever you prefer. Either will influence not only your story, but maybe the story of the entire campaign you're playing. Mechanically, you have icon die and you roll on those. And if you roll high enough, you get an advantage or an ambiguous advantage on anything that you're attempting to do. Now, these two things taken together make icons not only very powerful presences in the game world that you're playing in, but also make them very directly responsible for the actions and outcomes of the actions that you as a character are taking in the world. What does every epic campaign need? A great setting, a good challenge, and wonderful characters. Now, building and playing characters in 13th Age is a joy for both the GM and the players. Character designs are incredibly rich and flavored and customizable with unique talents, feats, powers, and spells that permeate the entire design of the game. Not only that, but if you want to go on a power trip, then 13th Age definitely is the game for you because your character's powers increase very rapidly and from level one, you can already do pretty brilliant things. The book does a really good job at helping you build and design your character because it has two clear tables that explain how your character progresses as it levels up and how you can quickly do the math to make sure that your character sheet is always up to date. Just remember in 13th age, everything scales with level. So there are a lot of multipliers, both on your ability scores, on your skills, on your two hits, and on the damage that you do that you need to keep it take into account as you're playing and leveling up. The last thing we'll look at in a bit more detail is combat, because combat is an integral part of any fantasy RPG, especially when you're using D20 systems. Combat in 13th Age is relatively straightforward, hard hitting, and a lot of fun. This is because the game uses mechanics like the escalation die in abstract distances, but it also has relatively straightforward and simple monster statistics, which make combat easy to run for the game master, allowing them to focus more on narrative and cool stuff that the players are trying to do. Now, the escalation die is a fun mechanic that I suggest anyone steals for their games. Basically what happens is every round, you get a plus two the attacks that you're making. The first round it's zero, but from the second round it's one, third round it's two, the fourth round it's three, and so on until it reaches six. This means that your players will hang on to those powerful skills and spells until the escalation die has escalated high enough so that they're pretty sure that they're going to hit when they try to use them. This makes combat very, very tense, and it makes combat a lot of fun as everyone anticipates what is going to happen next. Also, the use of abstract distances and theater of the mind gives the players and the GM a lot more freedom to manipulate the battleground or the space around them to their advantage or to their detriment. It allows you to come up with innovative solutions by manipulating aspects of the environment to do what you want to do, to try something cool, to try something novel, to try something groundbreaking, but at the same time, 
it is a bit harder to keep track of exactly where you are and what's happening all around you on the battlefield because you don't have a visual aid to support you. I found this the hardest thing to switch to, but now that I've gotten used to it, I wouldn't really want to go back because the use of these abstract distances, like everything being nearby or something being far away and requiring maybe a skill check to get there in a hurry, make for a lot more dynamic and fun encounters um, than a grid, in my opinion. Well, finally, the simpler monster stats. Simple monster stats don't mean that the monsters are boring. Actually, I find monsters in 13th age to be extremely well flavored and suited to a certain theme or type of encounter. Because they're so straightforward to run, I have a lot more mind space to focus on what the players are doing and to create interesting scenarios with really high stakes that really make the players lean forward, sit on the edge of their seats and stay engaged with whatever is happening in combat as the escalation die ticks up and their hit points diminish. 13th Age dares to be different. It accentuates storytelling and encourages creativity and improvisation at the table from both the game masters and the players. If you want to hear what it's like to play 13th Age, take a look at our Might and Mercy podcast, which is a 13th Age actual play game set in our homebrew world with epic stakes, great characters, and hopefully an interesting storyline that will keep you hooked.